In this video, I'm going to be sharing 10 exam hacks that you can use in exams and that don't actually require any additional studying at all. Let's get right into it. This is the fifth episode of the Study Smart, Study Hard series. And today I'll be focusing on the external factors that are hacks that will help you do better in exams and can all be achieved without actual study. So without further ado, let's get into tip one which is to make the teacher believe and think that you are a hardworking student. What you can do is participate in class discussions, ask questions, answer questions, kind of like be a teacher's pet and then make sure you're very involved whenever the teacher is giving a class. This helps the teacher to really know that you're there and paying attention or at least believe you are doing so and then they'll be able to mark you more leniently based on a number of reasons. They want you to do well and they think that you should be rewarded for all the work that you're putting in and also because they don't want you nagging for extra marks at the end once your paper's been marked. So to avoid this, they'll generally give you the benefit of the doubt and then they'll go into marking your paper with the assumption that you are right in the first place. The second tip is to take into account the teacher's preferences and info. This includes things like the difficulty and the timing of the test, which they've probably written up already and which is the next exam that you'll probably be going to take. Also note down things or what they say in class sometimes they might even spill it right away say this is likely to be coming up in your next exam or every year I've set a question like this so make sure to take a note of it other things they might give away is what kind and style of questions you're likely to be in the test for example if it's multiple choice or if it's extended response essays that you'll be having to do. So this gives you a better sense of what you're likely to come up against. And as such, be able to prepare yourself a bit better going into the exam. I also recommend asking questions to the teacher about certain materials. Sometimes they'll just straight up answer, oh, this won't be in the test and it's not accessible. Or they'll say, make sure you understand this concept as it's very important, which suggests that it's probably going to be in the test and you should probably put your efforts and attention into it. For example, this happened a lot with my finance course where for certain areas of what we were learning, the lecturer would explicitly say, this is not accessible, it's good for your own understanding, but it won't be in any test. Or the lecturer might say, this is something very important. I've always said a question on this and you should probably be able to understand and be able to explain the differences between these two things, but you won't actually have to apply it in a mathematical sense. The third tip is to train up your techniques and make sure you have the right resources. For example, this includes things like being able to read faster when you're answering comprehension style questions as well as being able to write faster when you're writing those long extended response essays as you want to fit more in in a shorter amount of time. You want to get into the habit of showing your working in things like mathematics exams as they generally allocate a lot of marks for that and not just all the marks for the final answer. Also, when you're answering questions, you want to get into the habit of answering those and nailing those keywords, syllabus dot points and key criteria that they're looking for. And of course, you also want to make sure you have the right resources. So what I mean by this is making sure you have the right pens. For example, I personally used and recommend the rollerboard gel pen because it writes a lot faster and as such, you can get a lot more written down in a shorter amount of time and it's a lot less pain for your wrist, especially if you're writing a lot in an exam, for example, a two hour or even three hour exam. The fourth tip is to make sure you have a good night's sleep the night before your exam. Ideally, you would like to have at least eight hours of sleep starting from two weeks before your exam starts, but the minimum is at least the night before you want to have a good night's rest. A lot of science and research has actually been put behind this and it concluded that people who had at least eight hours of sleep starting from two weeks ago, compared to people who didn't have eight hours of sleep. The people who had more sleep were 10% faster and 10% more accurate when it came to answering questions and thinking with their minds. And this was applicable both in sports activities as well as when answering exam style questions. So you definitely have a big bonus if you do get into a good sleep routine, starting two weeks from when your first exam begins. Personally, my routine is to sleep no later than 11 starting two weeks before the exam, which makes sure that I get into a good sleeping habit and that I can wake up early without the need for an alarm in the two weeks leading up to my exams. The fifth tip is to be in the right mindset and condition just before your exam begins. You definitely want your brain to be as fresh as possible, to be able to think clearly, figure stuff out and write down ideas that you might think of on the spot and think fast during the exam. What I like to do at least 20 minutes before the exam is to stop whatever study I'm doing and then just clear my mind. For example, I might go for a walk or just sit down and relax, maybe listen to some music or read a book. Starting at least 20 minutes before the exam starts, you can do any kind of these activities 
as long as it doesn't require the use of your brain so it's fresh, clear and ready to use when the exam finally begins. What I also like to do is eat some chocolate before the exam to give me that extra energy and I also make sure that I'm fully hydrated by drinking a lot of water which all helps me to get into the right mindset before the exam finally begins. Now just before I go on to the next tips which talk about what you should do during as well as after the exam, feel free to give this video a like and also subscribe to this channel to see more videos on studying hacks and studying efficiently which is what this channel is all about. So now onto tip number six and that is in the first few minutes of the exam plan out how you'll be taking and attempting the exam. In a lot of exams that I've taken they've given us reading time which is a few minutes to just scan through the paper without being able to write anything just looking through it and thinking how do I attempt this what kind of things can I do and can't do how difficult is it and how much time pressure it's going to be. I use this time to scan through the paper perhaps spend 30 seconds or so on each page and just assess the difficulty of the questions by reading a few of them here and there thinking in my head can I do it or can I not and also getting a rough idea of how long each page of the test is going to take so then I can get a rough idea of how long I will need to complete the exam if I was just attempting the questions as fast as I could. This way I can get a good grasp of the time pressure which will help you get a better idea and understanding of what your approach and test strategy should be and therefore help you do a lot better in your exam. An example I can give you for this is when I was doing a science exam there was a 30 minute time limit and then we had 50 marks in that paper. The first 20 questions were all one mark multiple choice questions and the next 30 marks were all short written answers with three or four marks each. Because there are a lot of calculation questions in the multiple choice exam, each question would take roughly one whole minute and since it was worth one mark each, it wasn't worthwhile doing these. However, because I didn't plan out ahead, all I did was start from the first question and as such I just completed the 20 multiple choice questions in about 20 minutes and then I only had 10 minutes to complete 30 marks worth of short answer responses and that wasn't enough time so like pretty much 99% of all the students who took that test we ended up not completing it in time and leaving about 20 marks or so completely blank. So what the good students realized for this was that they knew it was going to be very tight on time and the calculation problems in the multiple choice section weren't worth it so what they did was focus on the short answer questions and make sure they got three or four marks for each of those and therefore bring their marks up to 30 already and then use whatever time they had left on the multiple choice questions so therefore they covered a lot more of the marks that could be done in a shorter amount of time therefore giving them the better grades. My seventh tip is to get some studying done during the test. What I mean by this is after you've done all you can and attempted all the questions you know how to do in the test then what you can do is for the questions that you don't know you can use perhaps like the multiple choice section as your study notes and material as there will be a lot of useful information in there and you can also use this time to experiment practice proofs practice equations that you remember but weren't sure of and it's generally helpful if you're creative and try a lot of different methods because one of them is bound to work sooner or later. However make sure you aren't spending too much time on this as you also want to be focusing on other questions that are perhaps easier and are a lot more likely to give you marks. The eighth tip is to make sure you don't panic and you don't choke in an exam. Even if the test is really difficult you want to make sure that you're staying calm and fully focused because you can think everyone is doing the same test as me if I'm finding it difficult then most likely everyone else is too. If you're panicking and stressing out it means you aren't concentrating and fully focused on what you're doing so it's more than likely you'll make a silly mistake here and there and you might not be thinking in the right mind to think of what you actually need to be attempting that question and you'll probably forget what you need to be doing. You want to strike that fine balance between being too relaxed and having enough pressure as having pressure means you can work quickly and methodically through questions in a short amount of time and being more efficient but if you're relaxed you can think of solutions that you might not think of and you can also make sure you aren't making silly errors because you're paying more attention to detail. This happens a lot to me in maths exams where the easier questions I'll try to get them done a lot more methodically by putting a lot more pressure on myself as these are questions I've attempted many times before and I already am very comfortable with them and I shouldn't be spending extra time on them unnecessarily. However for the harder questions I need to be thinking a lot more and I don't want to pressure myself into coming up with ideas that won't work so I'd be a bit more relaxed, be a bit more open to new ideas as well as carefully make sure I don't make silly errors 
as I work through harder, difficult steps in the process. The ninth tip is to review your paper and test before handing it in. Some students, after they finish the last question, they might just immediately hand in their paper or they might not have saved enough time to quickly check their answers at the very end of an exam. What you should be doing is quickly flipping through every page on your exam booklet, making sure generally that your answers make sense, make sure you haven't skipped a question or worse, make sure you haven't skipped an entire page as this has definitely happened to people before. And also check if you've made any silly mistakes through your working out and go back to any questions that you might have marked before as unsure or questions that you think you probably got wrong. You can also review certain questions that you've done to check for silly mistakes and also go through questions again that you marked as unsure when you did them the first time. This will just save you so many marks that you probably deserve but if you did make silly errors or forgot something then this could cost you dearly so you want to make sure and guarantee that you are getting those marks. The 10th tip is to scan marks after getting your results and exam back. While this is a little shameless it does help a lot of people get a few extra marks and that helps them stand out a bit more from the rest of the cohort. Firstly make sure there aren't any errors with the counting and adding up of your marks or any incorrect marking as this has happened to a few people occasionally in the past. Also make sure you carefully go through the marking criteria to make sure that the marks that you did get deducted are valid and if the criteria is vague then make sure you at least go to the teacher to ask and explain why you went wrong and why you had marks deducted. And this fully wraps back to tip number one which was to make sure the teacher thinks you're a hard working student. So if you are fighting for those extra marks at the very end and making sure that you didn't lose marks that you did deserve, then when the next exam after this one comes about, they'll be a lot more lenient with their marking and probably reward you with a few extra marks here and there. Hopefully from this video, you can take out a few things from these tips that you can apply to your next exam. Let me know which of these tips you already use for your exams and also let me know if there's any tips that you feel should have been included down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to not miss out on my future study content where I give hacks and strategies on how to study more efficiently and effectively. The final episode of the Study Hard, Study Smart series will feature a live day in the life where Dineth implements all the strategies and study tips we've discussed so far in the Study Smart, Study Hard series to study for his own upcoming exam. As always, take care and I hope to see you guys in the next video.